The cholera epidemic in Haiti is in part a story about bad water economics, and it's also in part a story about missing health care institutions. Cholera is generally carried by feces in the water supply, so when cholera becomes prevalent, typically there's a dual problem, that is, individuals have no other place to go to the bathroom, and individuals have no other place to go to drink water, to brush their teeth, and to get refreshment. So a typical story of transmission would be that a water source, beco- water source becomes dirty because of defecation. Other individuals are then using that water to drink or brush their teeth, and they come down with cholera. The New York Times reports on the story of a six-year-old Haitian girl named Magali Louis. She goes down to a water source to defecate, and she brushes her teeth in the same source of water. Her father reports that she has been instructed not to swallow the water, but of course the water still isn't safe, whether or not the water is being swallowed. She did come down with cholera. Fortunately, she survived, but only after four days of treatment in a hospital. The family tries to drink from a local well as much as possible, but the family ran out of water purification tablets in 2010. They can't afford to buy new tablets, and so they gamble with dirty sources of water. The father put it this way, and I quote, If you make it to the hospital, you survive the cholera. Just to review some general problems of access in poor countries. First, there is the problem of access to clean water. There is also the problem of having access to soap to wash your hands. And most generally, there's the problem of access to latrines. Note that in Haiti, in particular, latrine access is actually down since 1990, In 1990, it was estimated at 24%, and right now it's estimated at about 17%. There's also a general problem of whether everyone involved knows the causes of cholera. In Haiti, this has become less of a problem over time as cholera has spread, but at the very beginning, it was a very serious problem indeed. There's an entirely separate layer of problems involving healthcare clinics in Haiti. These clinics and hospitals have really done a great deal of good work, but still they are extremely constrained in what they can achieve. Just to review some core problems there, first, cholera treatment very often is not integrated into the general public health services, or in rural areas, public health services may be extremely weak or non-existent. A huge problem in hospitals and health clinics is that very often the staff isn't paid or isn't paid promptly or isn't paid for many months on time, So these clinics and hospitals tend to be quite understaffed, and also the morale of the workers may be low. Because of lack of money, it's often the case that patients are discharged too soon, and also hospitals and health clinics very often are not clean, because they do not have the resources to keep themselves properly sanitary. Oral vaccines are a common approach to dealing with some diseases. Let's review briefly how that's gone. There is an oral vaccine which helps protect against cholera, and it's called Shanchal, and it was developed with the help of support from the Gates Foundation. The good news is that it costs, per person, only about $1.85. Still, there have been obstacles. For instance, Shanchal required a final stage of WHO approval, which did come through. It also requires a lot of health care infrastructure to administer and to educate the people taking it, Uh, One of the problems is simply that administering the doses involves a lot of record-keeping. So it's two doses over two to three weeks. This requires some amount of ongoing contact with the individuals and recording and keeping track of who has taken a dose and who hasn't. Another problem in Haiti is that the Haitian government has in general been skeptical of a lot of vaccines. They don't like the idea that not everyone can get it at the same time and so that some individuals are being singled out for differential access, and this seems unfair. Finally, the Haitian government relented, and a recent campaign targeted 100,000 Haitian individuals for administering the vaccine. A lot of people were quite skeptical, but they actually had an effectiveness rate of about 90%, which was higher than expected. So on the issue of cholera in Haiti, there is some real progress being made. This is all an extremely recent story, and it's not yet very well represented in the scholarly literature. To read more, one thing you can do is simply Google some of the key terms I'm using. Use also news.google.com for news accounts, and you can just put Haiti cholera into news.google.com. 
But one news story I liked in particular is from the New York Times by Deborah Sontag, and that's called Global Failures on a Haitian Epidemic.